All right, this is David Kurtz with TPM Media. I'm here with Dahlia Lithwick of Slate. You uh, and Philippe Sands did a, a piece for Slate uh, right after the uh, the Crawford revelation. And that was a uh, Bob Woodward's interview of her in, in the Washington Post, where she did go ahead and call it torture and say that that's why she, in fact, had stopped the prosecution of one of one of these detainees because, as far as she was concerned, the the evidence that they were trying to use was the was the fruit of torture. And you guys said that 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 told us more than we knew up to that point about this whole process. I mean, that it, that it really sort of was the big bombshell so far. And I'm not sure that everyone else quite covered it that way. So give, give me your argument for why that was such a huge development. And the fact that over the years, what had become, what had been previously a, a fairly cut and dried uh, set of international agreements about what constituted torture had become this ever-shifting, slippery, not just the John Yoo memo, but long after that had been rescinded, there was this sleight of hand going on uh, at the Justice Department that went right up to Michael Mukasey. So it was this constantly shifting, sort of shape-shifting definition that, that seemed at the end of the day to be a matter of, if we do it, it's not torture. Uh, and that, that was that elusive definition was one of the things that had made this whole discussion so problematic. Um, so I think when Susan Crawford went ahead and used that word, uh, that was what was profoundly different. And, and what was important, and, and I think Philippe and I tried to make this point in our piece, was that it wasn't waterboarding that she called torture. She said all of these separate and distinct techniques that were legal combined together, sort of the aggregated effect was torture. And I think that was what was so profound, was not just to have this high-ranking, you know, belt and suspenders Republican uh, using the word torture, but to say it's not a matter of, of defining it away. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out on a limb and say this accumulation of these various behaviors is torture. And that was dramatic. So I do think that there was a, a sea change when you're seeing senior, senior Bush people saying, I'm not going to elide or define or, or dance around it. I'm going to call it what it was, which is torture. And then obviously after the inauguration, the, the uh, executive order was issued by President Obama to, to shut this down within within a year. And there's been, I, I've seen some rumblings and, and, and I wanted to get your take on, on whether they've left themselves, as some people have argued, some wiggle room on this. I think there's also real questions about where uh, where we've redefined uh, the the, the in interrogation policies, and certainly I think they do leave the possibility open uh, for for uh, very very coercive inter interrogation down the line. And I think that one of the things that Eric Holder was was quite I don't want to say equivocal about, but he was less than completely clear about when he when he talked at his confirmation hearings was he felt pretty sure, pretty sure that the Army Field Manual would do it, that it was there was enough uh, leeway in there, but he wouldn't quite go all the way. Um, I think he wanted to leave it open to investigate more, he, he said, uh, and I think that's a response to some of, some of the rumblings now we're, that we're hearing particularly about we actually did elicit good information through torture, everything is classified, but in fact we did stop imminent terrorist attacks through torture. And so I think that the Obama uh, administration really wanted to, to fully investigate, to drill down, get all the information before they were willing to, without question, draw a line in the sand at the Army Field Manual. When you and I visited last on this, I guess it was last summer, and one of the points you made, which was striking to me, was that, and, and it's something I don't think most people realize, is, is just how few sources of information we've had on what's gone on at Guantanamo. Is that a fair characterization of, of what you've said on that in the past? I, I don't want to take the words out of your mouth there. No, I think that's very fair, and I think one of the things that happens when you talk to lawyers who represent people at, at Gitmo is, is just a maddening sense of frustration that everything in the world is classified. But I think it's certainly true that what we know about the people who are left at Gitmo and what they've done, even if you filter it through the, 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 the best arguments against them, and this was, you know, again, Seton Hall Law School did tremendous, tremendous yeoman's work on this years ago. Even the best case against them uh, is not always a very good case. And 
the Bush administration had a vested interest, David, in making it look as though they were the worst of the worst. So I think it's not an accident that one of the first things that President Obama's executive order says is we have to look at these files again from scratch, uh, you know, start from the very beginning and figure out who these people are and what they've done, because I do think that the story we've gotten has been quite one-sided. And Obama's in power, Democrats obviously with hefty majorities in, in both houses of Congress. Do you anticipate there being, and this just this goes beyond torture, but a broad review of the most controversial policies of the Bush era, where you, whether you're talking about torture or warrantless wiretapping? I, it seems to me that the message that we've been getting fairly consistently is we want to move forward, not back. We want to be bar bipartisan and not divisive. Uh, and that certainly we're going to, and we've seen this, we're, we're going to act very swiftly to reverse uh, the worst harms, be it interrogation policy, be it Guantanamo, be it um, other acts of lawlessness. But what we're absolutely not interested in doing is, uh, you know, having people sit for Nuremberg tri type tribunals, that it would destroy the country. So I, I think that's simply something that they, they feel very strongly within the administration. Uh, that there's no political capital uh, to be gained from, from, from looking at that. So they will paper over the, the evildoers uh, and, and fix the policies. Well, Dahlia, we appreciate your time. It's Dahlia Lissworth with uh, Slate.com. My uh, pleasure. We'll talk to you next time. It's my pleasure, David.